Thank you for joining Wars of the Roses. And this is A Materialistic Concept of Adam and Eve and the Serpent People by Brother John Cowan. An article from Rosicrucian Digest, Volume 9, Number 11, December 1931. A Materialistic Concept of Adam and Eve and the Serpent People by Brother John Cowan. Professor Busak of the Institution of Egypt, after a careful study of the myths of the dim past and extensive examination of Egyptian schools, says the spiritual narrative of Adam and Eve tempted by the serpent in the Garden of Eden was based upon early Egyptian traditions. The important role by the serpent in the book of Genesis is traced by him directly to ancient Egyptian sources. He says that Moses knew all of the mysteries of the Egyptian religion, and this explains why he describes as a great serpent the tempter who induced Eve to eat the forbidden fruit to the subsequent misfortune of the human race. In Ur, the oldest city of the Babylonian religion, have been found statues of a queer snake-headed woman, said to represent Lilith, Adam's first wife. The earliest monument dealing with the subject is a Babylonian cylinder of chlorite in the British Museum. In this is shown a tree with horizontal branches from which hang two round bunches of fruit. It is a date palm with dates. Upon either side of the trunk of the tree, a man and a woman are extending their hands for the fruit. Behind the woman, a serpent stands erect upon its tail. Archaeological discoveries in Assyria have brought to light a creation story closely related to that of Genesis. This version, discovered at Nineveh, comes from the library of Ossi Bonirpal and dates from 668 to 626 before Christ. But it is only a copy of an earlier Babylonian record which cannot have been later than the 12th century before Christ. According to Professor Brusak, Assyria had been dominated by Egypt 15 centuries before the Christian era, and Egyptian influences had therefore left important traces in the religion and customs of that country. The interesting cave of Madazila in southern France, one of the oldest known dwelling places of prehistoric man, contains a cleverly painted figure of a snake which archaeologists says was done some 50,000 years ago. All over the continent of Africa, snakes are held in reverence by various tribes, either as totems or tribal divinities. Professor Busak reasons that the great prevalence of serpent myths in Egyptian religion sprang from a fear of serpents entertained by primitive man long before the beginning of civilization. Before taking up the study of mysticism, I also hold that fear was the probable basis of primitive religion. But I now wish to call attention to another possible cause which seems to me even more plausible than the motive of fear. I refer to the probability that a race known as serpent people antedated Adam and Eve. Fear is a destructive process of thought, whereas these myths, which play so important a part in the early development of mankind, are evidently a result of constructive thinking, even though very primitive. In the first place, the traditions of savages and barbarians are based upon actual events. We shall endeavor, therefore, to reconstruct the event upon which this tradition is based and remove it from the field of allegory to which it has been relegated by many who could not conceive of any other explanation. Savages and barbarians have not yet reached the allegorical stage of development that comes with later civilization. According to Professor Winchell, in his Pre-Adamites, the name Adam in its original form did not refer to a particular individual, but to a collection of people. It is a Semitic name meaning mankind. Likewise, the name E and the names of all the patriarchs mentioned in the book of Genesis were used each in its collective sense instead of the singular. In other words, Adam was the name of a predominant tribe or race of people instead of one person. Eve was the name of another people. Likewise, Cain, Abel, Seth, and so on were names of other peoples who may have been offshoots from the amalgamation of the Adam and Eve peoples. Professor Sigmund Freud, in Totemism and Taboo, says, 
Totemism is a system which takes the place of religion among certain primitive races in Australia, America, and Africa, and furnishes the basis of social organization. Totemism was based upon the deification of a female ancestor. The most primitive peoples usually adopted animal names. Consequently, the totem name was usually the name of an animal. It was associated with animism and magic. Descent was traced in the female line to the deified ancestress, and all those who inherited the totem name were prohibited from intermarrying. In Lewis H. Morgan's Ancient Society, three distinct stages of development are traced in the evolution of mankind, salvagery, barbarianism, and civilization. In the earliest stages of development, Savage Man was primarily a hunter. Animals were not domesticated nor were crops cultivated until man rose out of savagery into barbarianism. But the domestication of animals for food was not in itself a voluntary act. It was forced upon a people somewhere by a growing scarcity of game. It was a result of the greatest economic revolution the world has ever seen. It upset the whole totemic system. It overthrew the animistic worship of a deified ancestress. It brought about the tracing of descent in the male line instead of in the female line. It substituted religion for totemic animism. Gardens were not cultivated until after animals were domesticated, for the roaming life of a hunter precluded a residence in one locality long enough for the cultivation of a garden. With the domestication of animals came a more permanent place of abode and gardens were cultivated as an auxiliary means of substance. W. Vunt says, It is a general law in mythology that a preceding stage, just because it has been overcome and pushed back by a higher stage, maintains itself next to it in a debased form, so that the objects of its veneration become objects of aversion. Now the serpent was coexistent with Adam and Eve, and is presented as an object of aversion. According to Vaughn's law, therefore the serpent represents a preceding stage which was at one time an object of veneration, but which had been overcome and pushed back by the higher stage of Adam and Eve. Hence, in all probability, the serpent was the totem of a people who preceded the Adam and Eve amalgamation, but were overcome and pushed back by them when religion took the place of totemism. Anthropologists have learned that the totem of the serpent was indeed a great people. It is perhaps the most widespread of any of the totems of aboriginal peoples. It became a symbol of cunning, sagacity, and wisdom amongst all people who came into contact with them. Had Adam and Eve been the progenitors of the human race, an account of them should have described their hunting grounds rather than a garden of delight. Their descendants should have been traced in the female line rather than the male line. A totem should have been mentioned instead of a god. Tradition tells us that Lilith was Adam's first wife. She was said to have been a snake-headed woman who became a demon and went about in the air. Since Adam was a race of people rather than an individual, the Lilis must have been a people with whom the Adamites were closely associated with. That Lilith was snake-headed indicates that they were connected with the serpent people, and that she became a demon and went about in the air signifies that the Lilis met with death, either at the hands of the Adamites or otherwise. For the adherents of the animistic system believed that all souls became demons at death. Eve was said to be mother of all living. That she was formed from a rib of Adam indicates that the Eveites were a branch of the same body of mankind as Adam, in contradiction to the serpent people. According to some authorities, the Hebrew word which has been corrupted and condemned into the name Eve is Shabbat, which means silent and passive. The Jewish Encyclopedia, however, gives her the name Isha, which it says is a Babylonian derivation, and it remarks, Noda Key explains the name as meaning serpent, preserving thus the belief that all life sprang from a primeval serpent. Another explanation says that Ish means man. I am impressed, however, with the resemblance of the name to Ishtar, a Babylonian goddess who, like Eve, was said to be the mother of all living. 
the belief that all life sprang from a primeval serpent comes, I am convinced, from the fact that its adherents was descendants of the people of the Serpent Totem, who in turn traced their descent to a deified ancestress whose name signified serpent. After the overthrow of the totemic system and the substitute of the male line of descent for the female line, the origin of their belief was forgotten, and only a lingering hazy idea remained that somehow they had sprung from a serpent. The date palm was a staple food very early in the history of mankind, and primitive man learned of the exhilarating and intoxicating effects of its fermented juice long before they undertook its cultivation. In animals, magic intoxication was often resorted to in order to induce visions. Therefore, the date palm became the tree of knowledge because in his visions, savage man attained his wisdom. After the great economic revolution in which the animistic system was overthrown, everything pertaining to animism became taboo. Hence the prohibition in regard to the tree of knowledge. The Adamites religiously observed that taboo, but the Evites, who were a more passive and impressionable people, yielded to the temptations of the serpent people and finally prevailed upon the Adamites to partake also of the forbidden fruit. This, I believe, is the correct materialistic interpretation of the story of Adam and Eve. Thank you for watching and please don't forget to share, like, subscribe, and comment. And if you can, please consider donating to Wars of the Roses. Links to PayPal and Patreon are in the description. Thank you so very much.